this is Pete Moore on Halo Talks NYC. I have the pleasure of having two industry veterans season people to make sure that you are knowledgeable and awesome in your new profession. I got Scott Douglas and I've got Nick Clayton here from NSCA. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having us, Pete. Awesome. So, uh, Scott, why don't we start off? Why don't you give your personal background? It sounds like you guys uh, entered NSCA at around the same time, but you might be a couple months ahead or or so. So, uh, why don't you you kick it off? Sure. Or a couple months behind, maybe you <laughs> maybe you were the the uh, pacemaker. Well, you know. <laughs> but Scotty, go ahead. Fire, fire yeah, away I'll with your title shot. and background. So, uh, current title: Senior Director of Business Development and Membership. And uh, I got brought in about eight years ago, actually got recruited in. Uh, so I was working in sales and marketing consulting and actually had some clients out in the New York City area. Oh, yeah, and, which uh, ones? Well, I'll have to think about it. It was the uh, <laughs> private equity group. So doing oh, really? turnarounds. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. But nice. uh, um, actually did personally did not know about the NSCA and got brought in for uh, an interview. And uh, I've really fallen in love with our members. I know that sounds a little touchy feely, but uh, our members are really the best. They are passionate about what they do. They're passionate about coaching people uh, from kids to seniors. And uh, so if anything, you know, my passion and my responsibility is to try and get them where they need to go in their careers. And so uh, that's why I've been there. And uh, we've got a great team out in Colorado. And so and you, where, you, on that so you live in New York and you end up moving to Colorado? Actually, no, we were based out of Denver. So I oh, didn't okay. have to move to uh, take this job. And, gotcha. uh, and uh, so I've been there since. Good uh, for you. Yeah. And Nick, why don't you give your, uh, your quick background as well? give you the old spiel. So I am the uh, personal training program manager at the NSCA. Uh, grew up in New Jersey. Uh, got the hell out as quick as I could. Uh, went to grad school at Florida. Worked in personal training, uh, campus recreation. Uh, ended up moving to Texas to manage the sports performance program for the team doc for the Texas Rangers. Oh, wow. Uh, was there for three years. Uh, was not a huge Texas fan. Think it's cool, but not for me. And okay. uh, Got certified with the NSCA back in 2001, and uh, opening came up, so I jumped, and I've been there just about eight years. That's great. We've got a big uh, University of Florida uh, family since uh, my my sister and my brother-in-law are are Gators, so my my nephew's 11, so i got to go with him. Any SEC game, i uh, I got to root for the Gators, yet my largest client back in the day was uh, Royce Pulliam. Out of Lexington, Kentucky, so I'm like a Wildcats fan. So those are the only things I gotta like pretend that uh, that I'm that I'm rooting with my 11 year old nephew. Not uh. let him know like what I'm really hoping happens. And they always say if you're not a Gator, you're Gator bait. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, all right, so why don't why don't we just educate everybody here on you know what the uh, the mission, vision, and operationally what what goes on you know at the NSCA National Strength and Conditioning. Association was a pretty damn good name for what you guys are doing. Very simple and clear. <laughs> With some of these other companies come out and create these crazy names, and you're like, well, what, what do you do? Um, so why don't you give us the, the quick commercial, and then we can talk through what um, you know how we can make sure more and more people get certified. So really our mission is about educating in strength and conditioning. So that starts with textbooks and uh, research journals, and then it works all its way to practical application in terms of we have the top strength and conditioning certifications really in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have a membership of about 30,000 professionals from all over the world. And, and really our vision is to advance those professionals so that they are making a difference in the lives of athletes and the lives of their clients that they work with. And uh, we are a nonprofit association, so we are driven by uh, that vision to support our members. What else would you have to add to that, Nick? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is when you look in the fitness industry in particular, it's kind of like the wild, wild west where there's some really good professionals and then there's just a, a low bar you know, yeah. everything from people in their basement saying, hey, here's how you squat. And their mom's yelling at him, come up for dinner, Johnny. And he's like, mom, I'm a personal trainer now. Um, so I know what we're really trying to do is advance that profession and, and make it more professional um, and really help people kind of do their jobs and, and help people perform better and move better. So so I'm, I'm uh, let's say I'm a, a senior at University of Florida. And uh, I've taken, you know, exercise physiology, kinesiology, and, um, you know, I want to go and work for, for a, 
it'd be great if I work for a you know, professional team, but maybe I want to start at a community college, I want to start a high school, wherever, or I just want to learn about this. Um, you know, what's the process? How long does it take? Is, it, is there any way to do it remotely, or is it all you know, class-based? How do you guys think about that? Um, I personally like to learn, like, when I dedicate time, not while I'm, like, multitasking, you know, three other things and taking a phone call. So how does it work? What's empirical about it? And, you know, how, how does someone get involved? Yeah, so if someone wants to become a strength coach or a trainer, uh, essentially it's, it's up to them to get into it and uh, find a mentor so that they can actually be in the weight room. I think that's one of the, the biggest mistakes people make is, you know, you can study a textbook, but really – fitness industry strength conditioning it's about relationships connecting and understanding uh, mm-hmm. and then making sure that you can connect with someone on a deep level so that they're going to buy what you're selling because if they don't believe that you care they're not going to listen uh, how someone gets there so essentially it's all based on a textbook is where the start is uh, there's extra materials that help them study but when they're ready they take the exam um, nsca offers live uh exam prep clinics and then there's also there's college courses that people can take Um, but the biggest thing is kind of meeting someone where they they need to be met so some people are book learners some people are more applied Uh, so it's kind of finding that mentor finding someone that can help guide you through it Um, but making sure that people are spending their time like I said in the weight room uh, so they kind of know how it feels how long does it take to get certified uh, it depends. I mean, you smart guy like yourself, I bet you can walk in tomorrow and take the test and pass it. Really? Um, for no, most I, I people. I highly doubt that. <laughs> uh, I most people, that. we say it's it's like three to six months, depending it, on Only how if focused. it's all based on tricep exercises, because I kick ass at those. Yeah, yeah, I got a couple of tank tops, and I might usually focus <laughs> on my triceps. <laughs> you I definitely, mean, besides that, is that there answer, a tricep chapter? Because I'm, I'll probably skip that one. Uh, Scott actually wrote the book on that. He wrote the tricep wrote the chapter. Right. Yeah. yeah, I got to skip that one. I will probably should definitely read the rest yeah no doubt um no how long how many months does it take to prepare how many hours how do you think about yeah it it depends on background so someone's education if they've got coursework in the in the content or not but in general we tell people about three to six months um, you know anywhere from five to ten hours a week but uh everyone's a little bit different on that one got it so so i do everything textbook i can do things online and then when i actually want to take the exam where's that where's that done uh, they are proctored. Scott, do you know the, the company name? Yeah, it's through Pearson Views. Yeah. So they have test centers all over the world. Oh, and gotcha. So you just sign up at one of those, and uh, you can take the test. Got it, got it. All right, so if you, if you want to get your kid into strength and conditioning program, you don't have to bribe anybody who works at the rowing, uh, in the rowing department at a, uh, at a bulge bracket that is college. Correct. You could actually, there's no we're working in a nonprofit here trying to help the industry and uh there's no uh you know uh, the rico act that we're breaking <laughs> by uh, by becoming a, a strength and conditioning coach so okay so i to go three to six months I'm, I'm excited i passed the exam this is all hypothetical but i'm probably actual if i wanted to i passed the exam and i'm like all right awesome what do i do next like how do you guys get help me get a job or how do you say hey look here's like a directory here's like an open job list you know how does that work So I'll start with that. We we have a very active job board, and so we work with quite a number of uh, colleges and universities to post jobs in the collegiate sector. Uh, We're doing quite a bit of active promotion at the high school level, and then private sector is getting more and more on board in terms of wanting to differentiate uh, themselves by hiring NSCA certified professionals. So our job board is a um, is a big part of that equation. Uh, the other one is we have more than 20 special interest groups. So depending on what you want to coach in, joining one of those groups gets you networked with other professionals that could be hiring their their next coach. And gotcha. uh, so we do work a lot to network uh, our members at the local level and at the national level. And how much does it cost to get certified? Uh, I'd say about what. I think it's about four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. So the exam, if you're a member, it's in the three to four hundred dollar range, and then uh, you know, out the door, you're looking at something like six hundred to eight hundred dollars, typically in terms of the study materials, the tests, uh, and all that good stuff. Got it. And then, is any part of the program set up where I'm learning about anything on the supplement side, or you know, vitamins, you know, you know, nutrition? How, what what component is is more like traditional exercise versus traditional nutrition yeah so nutrition is i would say it's like 15 to 20 percent of the total exam 
Yeah. Uh, Big thing with nutrition is scope of practice. So personal trainers, strength coaches, you know, they can't sit there and say, you know, hey, Pete, I need you to eat this, this, and this specifically. You know, that that's well, well beyond the scope of practice. Okay. So we educate them on the importance of nutrition, you know, key topics, supplements, um, but it's much more about, you know, how do you coach behavioral change? Mm-hmm. You know, you need to make sure that, you know, your clients are following a diet, but you don't want to be the one writing that diet. Got it, got it. Yeah, we, we were invested in a company. Uh, it's called Nutritious Life, and they do online certifications. You obviously you don't become a registered dietitian by taking it, but at least right. you got like enough to, you know, be dangerous in in your own home. I think is probably what it comes down to. So when when you um, when somebody now becomes a strength and conditioning coach, do you also is this network in place where I got continuing education credits? I got somebody I can talk to. I've got you know, uh, a glossary of like, hey, look, if, if there are these ailments or something's happening, you know, like we got like this continuing li- education library. It's basically like almost like a WebMD of like strength and conditioning. Yeah, I mean, going back, I got my, I got my CSCS in 2001, I think it was. And uh, I, I picked that because I went to an NSCA clinic on, uh, I think it was Plyometrics. It's a two-day clinic. Uh-huh. Uh, it was an overnight thing. 200 people there, and the content was fine. It was good, but uh, it was the connections, and, that, and that's what you know got me into the NSCA and kept me there because it's. I'm sitting there as a college student and talking to these guys that are teaching, and they're breaking this stuff down, you know, on their side time. Uh huh. And I'm talking to all these other coaches, and they're just like, you know, here's how you got to do it, man. Here's here's the help. Here's where you find stuff. Here's your next step. Uh, it is about the community, you know, and the, uh, the events that we put on, you know, the content's good. It's there. Uh, there's a lot of content everywhere, but, uh, it is the connections that you make. Mm-hmm. How do you guys control or not control, um, new practices or, you know, I got, I, now you watch, um, I don't know, like workout recovery is an example, or like you go into a tennis, uh, you go, I, you know, you used to go to watch a tennis match, like in, and then. They go and flash back to the um, to the locker room and like Djokovic's like on like a you know like an air bike and you're like okay well that's not normal <laughs> like usually they go from there to like a cryo now he's like on an air bike you know like you just see hear all these like or or Tom Brady is an example like you know he's basically like you know effectively turned into like somewhat of a machine based on you know really kind of like fine tuning everything that you guys probably do so when someone comes up with crazy ideas of like. Uh, you know, Pete Moore, you should go and sit in like a hot shower for like three hours afterwards because like this is like the new and improved thing. Like, what do you guys do to say like scientifically that makes sense? It doesn't make sense. Or, hey, like we're we're we got ideas here and like we got to try everything. So why don't you guys talk about that? Yeah, I'll say for one thing, we uh, you know having uh, th- the thousands of members that we have, there's a lot of techniques that our members are using every day that we're not going to try and control what they do at yeah. their gym. We try and stay at the principal level, and so we want to make sure that any principle that we're sharing is evidence-based and uh, right. backed by science. And mm-hmm. so that that is the focus of our events. We have you know education committee, research committee, conference committee. So these committees oversee the content that is being put out mm-hmm. uh, at uh, national and local events, and so that's definitely part of the quality control. And uh, and then staying at the principal level, I think that. You know, even our members will probably call each other out uh-huh. and uh, question things that they think are uh, getting too far outside of the science. Yeah, I think the it's one of those interesting differentiators, I think, the NSCA has and, and against its competition or other companies is that we're not telling people how to exercise or what workouts to do. We are mm-hmm. teaching people the fundamental principles and the science behind it so they can they can see something and say, you know what, that, that doesn't make sense scientifically or it does make sense. Uh, we do offer journals that put out a lot of content that are cutting edge, um, but kind of Scott touched on it. You know, I, I literally go through uh, a process. I, I was uh, quoted this week in a men's health on cold therapy and uh, called three of our PhD professors and said, hey, man, here's here's the research that I found. Yeah. Give, give me the info. What do you think? And, uh, you know, the, the knowledge they shared was invaluable. I was like, that's what, brilliant. So what, what was the what was the, the takeaway? Uh, cold therapy does help with some recovery, but not performance recovery. So if, mm. if you jump in the cold, you know, next day your performance might not improve, but you're probably going to feel better. You're going right. to sleep better. 
and those things can secondarily lead to improved performance, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not all there just yet. So we don't necessarily know, uh, you know, if it's good or bad. I don't think there's any negatives to it. Uh, I personally done it and I feel good afterwards. So I'll keep doing it. Yeah. I feel good after I like eat a bag of Doritos also, <laughs> but I know it's not the right thing for me. <laughs> well, I mean, you got those triceps, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, whatever I you're doing yeah, is working. Yeah. yeah, it's hard for me to keep her like a shirt on without cutting the sleeves off. But then I realized, <laughs> dude, I'm 46 years old. Like, it's not cool anymore. Like when I was 19, I'm like, yeah, of course I'm taking the sleeves off this thing. Like, <laughs> who's got like a scissor? I'm going to rip this thing up and turn it into like a, like a schmata or something. So let me ask you guys a question. So. You know, you both, you know, executives in your own right, you're both professionals and you work for a nonprofit. So how do you guys think about, you know, as you walk around this industry and you see these companies growing, you see like, oh, these guys get private equity and, you know, you're like, look, I'm doing awesome stuff. I'm helping a lot of people. And like my KPIs are like what makes me get up in the morning, what, what lets me sleep at night. It's not a dollar and cents game. It's like, I'm helping everyone win and I don't, you know, I'm participating in the capitalist society yet. I'm providing basically like a trampoline, if you will, for all you guys to actually do the right thing. How do you think about that personally? If we can get deep for a second. I guess how I think about it personally is I think there needs to be that nonprofit, not revenue at the as the number Most one costs, priority, costs, yes, at all costs, costs in this industry because yeah. um, we can provide that kind of check and balance. Right. I also think, too, within our membership, what gets me up in the morning is that uh, I think at our heart, our members are driven by something deeper than the yeah. bottom line. And uh, that's something I think that we can really relate to. Uh, the two words that our members use the most when I talk to them are love and passion. Yeah. And you don't think a coach is using those words, but that is not uh, revenue and profit. So yeah. it's, uh, I guess, I guess uh, we're kind of in the heart business more than you would think. Yeah, 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 I hear you. Yeah, I would, uh, I, I think, it's funny when I think back. My mom was a teacher. Um, I've got teachers in my family, and I always looked at. It, I was like, I don't, I don't like teaching. I don't like doing that. And then I wake up one day, and I'm, and I'm training athletes, and I'm like, I'm teaching them. You know, like yeah. I'm not just sitting there like, come on, squat deeper. Course. It's like, hey, here's what you're doing. Here's why you're doing it. Here's why it matters. Um, and I think just walking around the industry, even just you know walking where it is, so walking the trade show floor, you look at some stuff, and like, there's some really good stuff in there. And you look at some of the other things that people are selling, you're like, this is just pure crap. You know, right. and like this industry needs to get better. Yeah. And uh, I, I think the worst thing, that, the thing that irks me the most is when I see bad trainers that, mm -hmm. you know, not in terms of they don't know it. They don't want to know it. They don't care. They're just yeah, sitting there. It's, it's that's what I'm saying. Because, you know, it's a downward spiral of like, you know, if somebody's actually paying to get someone to give them the advice. And, and with the understanding that they have taken the classes and that they are now an expert or an authority. And when you think about... Um, and I read this book one time where it's like, you can't become an expert in, at anything unless you devote 10,000 hours to it. You know, and you think about that, my nephew is 11, who I was referencing before. You know, he was like, he went one for six from the field the other day, he's 11. And uh, he's all upset. I'm like, bro, you've been playing basketball for like 300 hours in your entire life. Okay, like you should go one for six. You know, maybe one for 10. It's yeah. on the floor. Um, but as, as you talk about, um, you know, the level of knowledge and kind of being an evangelist and making sure that you know what's going on downstream, you know, um, from a coaching standpoint, you know, you've got the exercise, you got a little bit of, you know, like a sprinkling of, of nutrition. Do you also provide, you know, like here's like different ways to get to get, you know, millennials and, and high school kids to like respond or like, you know, here's how you here's have to motivate like this next generation. Like if I yelled at my nephew, then the kid might cry. I hope not. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like things have changed. Like you, you yelled at any of us. We're like, all right, you coach me up. Like I'm bring it. If you need to like, I wouldn't say like hit me, but like, if you need to like, you know, push me against the wall for a second, like when we were growing up, you coach basically had the right to do that. Cause he's like, yo, if I don't make you better, you are not going to make yourself better. And I'm not going to yell at you after that because I don't think you're going to get better. So you want me to yell at you. So that's a long winded way for me to say, do you guys provide motivational tools and like, you know, ways to like get in touch with athletes and make them better? 
Uh, yeah, so there in the in the textbook, there's you know your your fundamental you know health behavior uh, information, you know specific things in the background. Um, but I think more pressing and current is uh, especially more on our coaching side. We've got uh, Scott Caulfield's our, our head strength coach. He's got a master's degree in coaching education, and uh, it's been a real passion for him. So I would say you know it, it, probably over the past three years good number of our conferences and clinics have had coaching techniques. Uh, you know, how do you break through? How do you connect with people, uh, especially with millennials? Because it is, you know, it's, it's funny. I almost think when I start thinking, oh, millennials, you know, they don't do this stuff or that stuff. I'm like, is that, I think I'm getting old. I think I officially became old when I started talking about <laughs> yeah. another generation getting and off my every, lawn. Every generation thinks the generation before them is like a little lazier or like, you yeah. know, they have, too, they have it too easy. But, um, I don't know, man. Like I, I remember you, you weren't a, you were not allowed to play in a game, even if it was like a recreational game. Like if period one was practice and period two is the game, like you were not allowed to play in the game unless you showed up for practice. And like fundamentals of like boxing out, which even though I, you know, my triceps obviously are abnormally large, I have not been boxing people out recently on the streets or anything, which is probably better for society. But like you got to learn how to box out. Like you got to learn how to lift properly. You got to learn how to take care of your body. And I feel like we still have to make sure that we get that across that it's not optional. Yeah. <laughs> and so so I love what you guys are doing. I hope we can be a part of uh of helping you grow your business and and grow the industry. And uh you know, if uh, anyone on here wants uh, or needs some experts, go to the uh, National Strength and Conditioning Association. And uh, if you want to build a career in the space, this is the the starting point. So, guys, congrats on what you built and uh, and, and keep forward in, with love, passion, and uh, and knowledge. Thank awesome. you so much. Thanks this is for awesome. having us. Thanks for having us. All right, cool. Thanks, boys.